Fortnite Chapter 2 Remix is finally here and with that comes a new Solo Victory Cup meta and many changes as it is a whole new map and loot pool. Now the first Solo Victory Cup is here sooner than expected with it being in the next few days on Friday and will be pretty much weekly through the entire season. Now don't worry because in this video I will be going over some tips, the new meta for solos and some key strategies to make sure you can qualify. So the first thing I want to start off with is what is the Solo Victory Cup. The Solo Victory Cup is a solo tournament where there is two rounds. The opens round which is available to everyone is you have 7 games to qualify and you have to get in the top places depending on your region. For Europe it is the top 15,000, for North America it's the top 10,000, for Brazil it's the top 2,500, for Middle East it's the top 2,000, and for OC in Asia it is the top 1,500. Now this is the exact same format and everything as it was last season as you get 65 points for winning a game and you you only get one point per kill and again this means that is a very placement heavy format and you will need to be playing placement to be able to qualify. Now in order to qualify if you played last season then you will know that you only really need around two good games to qualify and I'm counting top fives as good games. And since the format is the exact same as last season then to qualify in most regions it will be around 110 to 120 points every single week. But now the finals is a little different than the opens where you have three games and if you win a game you get $100. Sounds easy enough right? No, these games can go to heal off where it's pretty much RNG if you're going to be able to win or not. Now luckily enough it shouldn't be that hard in finals as it contains a ton of players so it should be free money this remix season. So now let's talk about your game one strategy and the importance of this game. Firstly, in your first game, this is likely to be the lowest elo lobby that you're going to play the whole tournament because you can be put in this game with anyone. There's tons of players playing this, so most people are likely to be bad in this game. Now, if you are a confident fighter, you should be able to take advantage of this first game and go for some kills, but don't worry, if you're not, you can still play safe and get a ton of points since remember it's 65 points for a win. But in your first game, if you do die of spawn, do not panic as you'll have little to no points so you should still be in a really low elo so your next game shouldn't be too terrible. So in this first game, you should be aiming for a top 5 placement as that will guarantee you a ton of points. And I have found the best way to do just that while also getting some kills. So basically you need to start about 5 minutes late as then you will be in a game with some of the people who died of spawn and most of the time they won't be that good. Then if you want to take some fights in the mid game, then I would suggest trying to be on dead side when taking these fights as this will help you to not get third party and be able to finish out the fight with no issues. Now once you have managed to get through the early and mid game, I would suggest that in the end game you try to play height as much as possible as this will give you a clear advantage over the entire lobby. This will also help you to be able to pick up a few more elims as you have opportunities to fight and spray down at people. Now once you've had that insane good game, you will be in a much higher elo lobby which means the games will be way more stacked and much harder and filled with better players. I would advise you to play safe in these types of lobbies as the fights will be much harder as the format is way more placement based so you can pick up some free points. So in order to play safe in these lobbies, I suggest you rotate to the dead side of the map which if you don't know is going to be the side where it's pulled the less which means that it should have the least amount of players on it. After this, just be sure to survive as long as possible and you should get enough points if you had the first game to be able to qualify. Now since I have gone over the format and given you guys some tips on how to play your games, I will now be going over the loadout you should be carrying. The first thing you should be carrying is the normal assault rifle as this is the best AR in the game but if you have an AUG that should do as well. But again if you don't want to carry an AR then you need to be carrying the drum gun as this gun shreds through builds and is really good if you get into somebody's box. Now the shotgun I want you to be carrying will be the normal pump shotgun as I find this to be much better than the tactical shotgun as it seems to hit for way more damage. Now after the weapons the next thing is mobility in my opinion the grappler will be the best mobility find this season in solos. But unfortunately this will be very hard to find as it has a 5% chest spawn rate but if you can't find one then carrying either launch pads or crash pads will be very valuable. Now right after this you will need to be carrying some sort of heals. Now this season heals have been very hard to find but if you do manage to get some minis and big box those will be good to carry but I honestly think carrying the chug jug if you can find one will be really good. Now since I just went over the best new meta loadout, I'll be going over drop spots. This will be very important to you if you want to qualify as having a good drop spot could make or break your entire tournament. It will be the decider on how much loot you get and the quality of your loot. 
Now, I suggest dropping somewhere you can get at least 8 chests and some floor loot spawns, and somewhere you'll be able to farm metal, as this is very scarce if you don't land somewhere with some metal. So that is why I have come up with some good drop spots so that can guarantee you some good loot and lots of metal while still being fairly uncontested. The first drop spot is going to be this junkyard to the right of Frenzy Fields. Now this drop is going to secure you some chests and also max metal and then if you rotate around there's a few more chests so hopefully you can stack up on some top tier loot and heals. Well now the second drop is going to be this weather station below retail row and this place is going to secure you some metal and also if you do get a good drop for that main tower then if anyone lands on you you should have some free kills. But again this should secure you enough loot to play out all of your solo victory cup games. Now this third drop is going to be the best one yet as it is the ski spot right next to Misty Meadows. This place is going to guarantee you some early loot which then you can go in third party Misty so you can get a ton of points. But don't worry cause if it doesn't give you enough loot for some reason you can always rotate out and there is plenty of houses to loot around. Now after you have found a drop spot or chose one of mine you will need to have a drop map to secure yourself having the best drop every single game. Now with this drop map you can either buy one off someone you know or online or if you can't do that then I was just looking up a tutorial right here on YouTube to learn how to make one yourself. Now in this video I'm pretty sure I've covered everything you need to know about qualifying for your first ever solo victory cup finals and be consistent with it. But without further ado if you like this type of content be sure to like and subscribe and also use my code piggle in the fortnite item shop and I'll see you in the next one.